Hey folks, in this video I'm going to cover how to use the new independent jaw tracking feature in Analyzer. Now we've always tracked the jaw with Analyzer, but now we've added a new landmark set to give you independent control over the jaw. Uh, what that does is on the animation side, instead of the jaw just being part of the mouth group, we've now separated it into its own tracking group uh, to give you independent control um, and thus better quality. So it's a little bit more tracking to do on the front end if you choose to do it this way. Um, but you do get really nice results on the animation side. So, Analyzer, new job. Now you do need 2.6 or above to use this feature. Uh, your input video file. So go ahead and choose a video. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to start off with a static cam. The feature works with either type of footage, but we'll go with static cam right now. Okay, so the big thing you're going to do here before hitting create is you're going to go to the advanced tab. Now analysis definition file. This is placed in the advanced tab because this is an advanced feature. If you're completely new to Analyzer and you've never tracked the face before, um, I don't recommend jumping right into this because it's a there's a few steps that you're gonna have to do that uh, aren't as easy as some of the other features. Um, analysis definition file. So go ahead and browse. Now the analysis definitions are found in the installation folder of Analyzer. So you're gonna go to C program files, faceware, analyzer, and assets. We now ship with three different analysis definitions. There's the base scheme, which is just the traditional landmark set with the brows, eyes, and mouth. Uh, there's also with jaw, and there's with jaw and with cheeks. Uh, the cheeks are even more complex, so those are going to be covered in their own video. So for now, I'm just going to choose analysis definition with jaw. All right, and then go ahead and hit create. Okay, now if I just drag my landmark set over to the side for a second and we'll just take a look at it you'll notice we have three new points these are our jaw points uh, we also have a new markup group jaw um, the nose points are included in all of the groups uh, they help to stabilize and kind of tie everything together so that includes the jaw alright so the biggest thing right off the bat that you need to know is we cannot auto track the jaw so if you're used to using auto track only or if you're using analyzer light uh, as, as opposed to pro um, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the jaw tracking you're going to need to track these with the pro tracking tools now that being said thankfully it's pretty easy and I'll show you in a second um, but the auto tracking result is not going to give you useful data for the jaw that's something we hope to fix and add in in the future but as of now it will not so but we're still going to auto track it and I'll show you why in a second so auto track choose static cam choose your optional neutral frame if you need to if you're working with tough footage okay now that's going to complete and let's see what we got here alright so the most of the face looks fantastic really good auto tracking result except my jaw tracking points are just kind of right below the mouth and aren't really doing anything useful Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to select the jaw group. So now I'm looking at just the nose and the jaw points. Now the reason I still auto track it is because the nose is done. So I can actually select these points and hit Control L to lock it. Uh, alternatively, you can go to Edit and click Lock Landmarks. So now the nose, even though it's part of the jaw group, is already done. I have auto tracking to thank for that. So now what I want to do is I want to go to Edit and Reset Markup Group. And that's going to put my unlocked points back to their starting position. The reason I want to reset them before continuing is because I want to use the distance between these points uh, the way they are by default. Okay? So out of habit, I typically start on frame 0, and I'm going to go ahead and make a training frame. So I'm going to go to Edit and Reset Markup Group. As a reminder, this functionality is exclusive to Analyzer Pro. You won't be able to create training frames without uh, with Analyzer Lite. So I'm going to drag my points over here. Now my three points are going to follow the jaw line, uh, or the chin line I should say. Now the chin line is not an accurate representation of where the jaw is. However, most of the time it's pretty accurate. It will not be accurate 100% of the time. There will be cases where the chin line does something weird or there's a roll of skin or a beard or something in the way that simply makes the data wrong. However, most of the time it's pretty useful. So that's why we've added this in for you. So the middle point 
is going to go right on the chin line and the bottom of the chin the screen right point will go on the chin line and you want to line it up with the width of the mouth so right about there okay so that's all I have to do for my first training frame now this is about a half open mouth shape remember what we're trying to do here is track the movement of the jaw so I want to find a frame where her mouth is closed and there we go now as you can see again I'm starting from the original auto track result so I could either reset it and start from scratch again or a little bit easier. I can go back to my training frame, select my points, and hit Copy Landmarks, Control C. Then I can go to my mouth closed, and I can Control V, or Edit Paste Landmarks, and it's going to put them in the same exact spot. Now it's not just helpful to get them close, but it's also helpful because the distance between these points will remain consistent. If on every training frame you're moving the points independently of each other, you're going to end up with varying distances, uh, which can cause kind of sliding and jittery results in your tracking. So whenever possible, try to copy and paste the, the landmarks to uh, make sure you have that consistency. Now, here's an interesting, uh, I was talking about how it's not always perfectly accurate um, where the jaw is, and if we look at these two frames, the chin line is in the same place but the mouth has clearly moved. So right off the bat we're seeing how this isn't always going to be perfectly accurate. But we're still going to track it because it's still going to be uh, more useful to have it than to not. Okay, so let's find... There we go. How about right here? So I'm going to control V. So now we can see we've had some movement. There's also head movement in this video because it's static cam, so uh, that's something to consider. You may need to add a few training frames for movement of the head especially if there's turning and rotating. And let's see. Let's go right here. So I'm looking for frames of video where her mouth is kind of doing different things and I'm seeing movement in the chin. Uh, in this case, if we kind of zoom in right here, you can see I don't really have a clear line. Um, that's one of the uh, tricky things about this process, but you just want to try to get it in a consistent spot, you know, the same way you did uh, the previous time. All right, so let's look at my training frames. I've got open, sort of closed, a little bit up, and a little bit open again. Let's just go ahead and train and track this and see how it goes. So I'm going to click Train, and that's going to generate a jaw tracking model with my four training frames. And then I'm going to hit Track. And we're good, so let's just go ahead and play and see how this does. So you can see, with only four training frames, and I mean this only took me a few minutes here um, I've already got the uh, up and down movement of the jaw so you know if we kinda go through these frames here you can see how accurate it can be with only just a few training frames now if you were to go over this with a fine tooth comb you'd probably find a little bit of sliding that maybe you didn't want but that can be easily corrected with more training frames but I think for this particular shot and the type of motion that I'm looking for, I would actually consider this done. Um, now when I move into animation, I'm going to see uh, kind of how this becomes useful. So I'm going to go ahead and parameterize this shot, kick out an FWR file. So I'm going to pause this video and then we're going to come back to Maya in a second to see how this is actually applied. Okay, here we are back in Maya. Now there's a couple things you're going to need to do before you can take advantage of this data. We're going to actually tell Retargeter where to put the jaw information. Normally we would retarget right into the mouth group with the mouth parameters, but now we have uh, independent jaw animation, so those parameters are separate and need to be added. Okay, so file load and character setup here. I'm going to load my updated file. Uh, you can see I have a head group because I've been uh, working with head animation with this new version. Um, but I actually want to create another new group, and we're going to call it jaw. Now, here's something very important. You will not see the jaw parameters in this list. Okay, So for now, just go ahead and choose head or choose uh, any of these parameters. We're going to edit this in a minute. Choose your jaw group. Okay, So you now have your jaw group here at the bottom. So before I add any controllers to the jaw group, I'm going to actually have to remove them from the mouth group. Okay, In this particular character, I open the jaw with the translate Y of this control here. If I try to add this control, it's 
going to tell me I can't do that because it already exists in the mouth group. Okay, so first I need to go to my mouth group up here and I need to find my translates here and any other controls that I want to use for the jaw. Let's see, what else might we use? Jaw left and right or jaw forward and back. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. All right, and then go down to your jaw group. We'll update my list. We'll grab my translates and jaw left and jaw forward. Okay, add them back in. So now I've transferred those attributes from the mouth group to the jaw group. Make sure your min, max, and defaults are good to go. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And let's call it with jaw. Okay, so now that we have our jaw group created and our file saved, there's something we need to do before moving forward. I'm going to go ahead and close character setup, and I'm going to open up a text editor and load the file that I just created. So we'll go to open file and we'll say with jaw. There we go. Now this is a XML file, if you're not familiar with XMLs. Um, they're pretty cool text files because they're really easy to read. You can see we have uh, the name of the character, um, you have your components, which are the groups, uh, and then you have the name of them. And here's what we want, the parameter file. Okay, So I'm just going to press Control F and I'm going to search for jaw. Okay, and uh, There's lots of controllers with the name jaw, so I can get fancy here and I'm going to say name jaw. There we go. That helps me find what I want. And all I need to do is change head to jaw. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and file save. Now I'm sure you're thinking, why can't we just select jaw in the application? And you will be able to. So if you're watching this and you saw the jaw params in, in that option box, then ignore this part. If you don't see jaw params, this is how you can easily set it to be uh, that value. So close your text editor. Okay, and next we're going to come over to Retargeter, and let's just reload that same file. And now you can see jaw is looking for jaw params. So just to mention quickly, in the expression set, in the character setup, you have three jaw expressions. You have jaw open, jaw left, and jaw right. So these are the three that drive the jaw movement when you're uh, using autosolve. Um, so if you're loading a previously done file and adding the jaw group to it, you'll probably already have these done and you won't have to change anything because it will recognize the new group and apply them accordingly. Uh, if this is a brand new file, then you would just go down your list and apply the jaw expressions normally. Uh, and again, it will automatically work with the new jaw group. All right, so let's go ahead and open a shot now and actually apply this data and uh, see what we get. So open performance and retargeter. Make sure your rig's open, of course. I'm going to load my jaw tracking FWR, the one we kicked out from Analyzer. This is my new XML file that includes the jaw. And uh, no shared pose database needed right now. I'm going to import video, though, uh, and audio. So hit OK. Let's just quickly set up our image plane so we can see what we're looking at here. All right, so I am going to focus purely on the jaw, so I'm going to leave the other groups untouched for now. And we'll just uh, select the jaw group and set it to default, so we're starting from scratch. All right, so now we are ready to go. So what I'm going to do is select the jaw group uh, and go ahead and hit retarget. There we go. So now let's turn this audio off. Okay, so now I've got an auto solve on the jaw. Now this will be a little bit stronger than the pure mouth auto solve, but again, it's auto solve is really meant to be just kind of a blocking pass for you. So the real quality gains are going to come from using uh, your poses independently for the jaw. So starting with auto pose here, I'm going to go ahead and start with three. All right, so let's check out what we got. So we got a wide open jaw. So again, uh, you know, there's only a few attributes in the jaw group so it's really easy to pose so I'm just gonna go ahead and focus only on the opening and closing right now for demo purposes but so we'll open it about there I typically use the the teeth as an indicator of how much the jaws open uh, it usually works pretty well so I'll go about there I'll update my pose and we'll just call this one open and then we'll go here so auto pose usually gives us kind of a half open mouth as we're getting started as an average about right there is right so I'll update and we'll say average and then we'll get this one so we got kind of a 
almost closed sort of thing. Update, and we'll call it, uh, well, almost closed. And then let's just go ahead and retarget. Cool. So let's take a look now. There we go. Okay, so it's looking much better. I'm going to go ahead and add three more auto poses. If you add more poses, it's going to be better, and it's so quick to do so that it's usually worth doing. So there we go. Update that one. Uh, we'll call it slightly open. This shot has head movement as well as head tilting, so you're going to need a few more poses than you might if you're using uh, head cam video. Uh, this one looks like it's pretty much fine, so I'm just going to uncheck it because it's. if the auto solve was correct, then there's no use putting a pose in there. And that one looks correct too. So uh, retarget again. We'll check this result. Right, so that's pretty much how you're going to track and animate the jaw independently. Now if you don't have the jaw group, again, you still do get this data. You get data from the texture tracking uh, surrounding the mouth landmarks and, and this basically this whole entire region in here. Uh, but what's great about the independent jaw is for higher quality work where it's paramount that the lip sync and, and the timing of the, of the speaking and the emotion is, is really just perfect, this allows you to really hone in on just that one area and once you get used to it, it's really fast because as you can see, these poses only require, you know, a few seconds just to adjust the, you know, the amount that the jaw is open. So, uh, I hope this tutorial was, was helpful and shows you how to do it. Again, this is an advanced feature, so if you're just getting started with Retargeter, I highly recommend leaving the jaw as part of the mouth group until you're a little bit more familiar with how poses work, uh, how they influence your entire solve, and how to generate you know, animation with the base set before adding the additional information. But once you do so, you know, we're pretty confident that you guys can create some awesome stuff. So, uh, as always, if you have questions, hit us up at support at facewartech.com or you can check out the website facewartech.com.